Hello there. Today's story is taken from this rather eerily tattered collection, torn to shreds at the hands of children desperate to know the secrets in which the stories would tell. Stories by the fantastic Beatrix Potter. And the story begins with what Miss Moppet saw. I hope you find it as thrilling as I seem to think it is. <laughs> now pairing with today's lovely thrilling tale is a lovely thrilling ah oh, yama scotch from Oban's distillery. Now because it's Beatrix Potter we will be drinking, and by we I mean me, because it's just me here. I'll be drinking out of a teacup, because isn't that just the cutest little flowery cup you've ever seen? So perfectly Beatrix Potter, with the thrill of something that's not tea. As always, pour yourself something yummy to drink. Relax, enjoy, and, and give me a second and we'll do it. Cheers, I forgot to uh, pour this as I was and cheers. This is the story of Miss Moppet. Do you know why her eyes look so big? She thinks she has seen a mouse. This is the mouse peeping out from behind the cupboard and making fun of Miss Moppet. He is not afraid of a kitten. This is Miss Moppet, jumping just a little too late. She misses the mouse and hits her own head. She thinks it is a very hard cupboard. The mouse watches Miss Moppet from the top of the cupboard. Miss Moppet ties her head in a handkerchief and sits before the fire. The mouse thinks Miss Moppet is hurt. He comes sliding down the draperies to get a closer look. Miss Moppet looks worse and worse. The mouse comes a little nearer. Miss Moppet holds her poor head in her paws. Then she peeks at the mouse through the hole in the handkerchief. And the mouse comes very close. The sudden Miss Moppet pounces on the mouse. She catches him by his little tail. As the mouse has teased Miss Moppet, Miss Moppet thinks she will tease the mouse. That is not a nice thing to do. Miss Moppet ties him up in the handkerchief and tosses it about like a ball. But she has forgotten about the hole in the handkerchief. When she unties the handkerchief, there is no mouse. He has wriggled out and run away. Now he is dancing a jig on top of the cupboard.
Is it a thriller? Kind of. It is quite thrilling, even if your narrator is too dramatic. Is there such a thing? It is a cat and mouse tale. There's a chase that happens. You're not sure what will happen. Um, one of the things, you know, the question of thriller aside, one of the things that I like about this story is that you're not really sure who you want to win. So much as you at the beginning are like, well, obviously you don't want Miss Moppet to catch the mouse and eat him or maim him or whatever she plans on doing with him. But at the same time, the mouse is kind of a jerk. Like he, you can understand the whole Tom and Jerry sort of thing, because as much as you don't want the mouse eaten and mangled, he makes fun of Miss Moppet and he dances on the jig and he deserves to be eaten and mangled. And uh, uh, so, so it's interesting in the way that you don't know who you want to, to sort of win. And it's nice the way it works out as sort of a tie between them, because after all, Miss Moppet is not a cat. She's just a kitten. And she's like, ah, I tried. I got embarrassed and I'm tired. So I'm going to nap. Who cares if the mouse, you know, wins this time? Because next time, I'm only getting bigger and bigger each day. I'm going to get him someday. The other thing this story makes me think about is sort of those old high adventure tales of, uh, you know, like Odysseus and his men, you know, who fight giants um, or Sinbad and the uh, one-eyed ogre. No. Uh, although, you know, there's fighting ogres. A Cyclops. Odysseus. Sinbad. Sinbad fights so Cyclops, I'm, I'm certain, in Tales of Arabian Nights. Anyways, it makes me think of these stories, and it's in that way actually really kind of clever and really sort of funny that you've got, I mean, a, a story, a very domestic tale of a little kitten, you know, just trying to do her duty with ridding the house of mice. I mean, she wants to play with it a little, but doing this duty um, and kind of making a parallel to the epic proportions of like, Odysseus and his men, or uh, making the mouse Sinbad and Miss Moppet the Cyclops, I think is really clever and kind of cute. And maybe that's far-fetched and not true at all, but let's just imagine it for a second. That's kind of cute, hey? And the other thing I really always loved about this story is the humor in it. And that's why I thought it'd be funny to try to tell it as a thriller, um, which, I mean, Beatrix Potter's stories are so, so lovely. And so it's fun to play around with them and tell them in a way that I've never necessarily ever read them before. But there's so much humor in this story. And I love that it's, it's a very kind of serious cat and mouse tale that just ends with the mouse dancing a jig on top and the kitten being like, I'm gonna take a nap because I'm tired. And it ends very, like, not dramatically at all, which is just fantastic and I think adds to the humor. Our take home from this story, like, lessons per se learned, know when to quit, mice can be jerks, kittens need naps, and Beatrix Potter writes thriller stories? I hope you guys have enjoyed this little bit of silliness and I would love to hear in the comments down below from you guys if you enjoyed this, if you thought this was the worst thing you've ever had to see, if you want more stories like this, if you have a particular story you'd like me to read and discuss, if you have more thoughts on the stories, the story. All of these things, guys, I would love, 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 love to hear. Comment down below, let me know what you're thinking, and yeah, let's, let's, let's parse this out a little bit. As always, I hope whatever you've been drinking has been good, but the story has been a fair match. Cheers, and, uh, yeah, cheers. <laughs>
work on your game. You know, if you're gonna bring it, bring it. And uh, don't forget that there's a hole in the handkerchief. Now, if you're Odysseus or Sinbad or the mouse, remember there's probably a way you can end your tail by dancing a jig on the cupboard. So there's always hope. Thank <laughs> you.